Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Tyler. This is going to be a video that is going to make a lot of people who are following the doctrine of forgiveness extremely uncomfortable, and it is going to rubble some feathers. And so, ever since that I have been exposing the doctrine of forgiveness that is in the religion of Christianity, there have been some Christians, there have been some people who follow the doctrine of forgiveness that has been getting extremely outraged at me. And you know the reason why is because they have been going by what they have been told, presented, and beaten up inside of their minds based on what the religion of Christianity has presented to them, what forgiveness is. And it's not even biblical forgiveness that is in the Bible at all. But when they hear somebody like me say such statements like that, they think that this is something new up under the sun to them, or this is something that they have never encountered before. And so it's just like I have said and asked the question on my community page, and I am going to ask this question again. Where is it in the entirety of the Bible to where it states that when someone trespass or transgress against you, then you forgive it and then you have to forgive. Now, I will be waiting for the scripture and the verse of what I have just stated. But until the meantime, what a lot of these people who follow the doctrine of forgiveness are going to do is go immediately go run to their so-called proof text to try and answer my question. And none of these scriptures have nothing to do with the status of the person who was done wrong. And it does not have nothing to do with the status of when someone trespass against you and then you have to forgive it or you forgive it right then and there. Now, all of these so-called proof texts of what these people who like to follow the doctrine of forgiveness that is in the religion of Christianity, they're going to immediately reserve to the first one. And that is Matthew 6 chapter, the 12th through the 16th verse, the Lord's Prayer. And they use this scripture in order to gaslight people that does not even forgive the person who have did the transgression. And then they want to make it feel like the person who was on the status of innocence and don't forgive, make them feel like they have done something wrong. And then just like they use this scripture, they say, well, you have to, you have to forgive. If you do not forgive, God will not forgive you of your trespasses. Just a gaslighting tactic to tr keep a person like that, up under fear. And their next one that they like to go run to is Colossians 3 and 13. This scripture that these people who follow the doctrine of forgiveness like to use as their trap one, like I got you. You have to forgive, even though what Paul said at the church of Colossae and presented that you still have to forgive no matter what, when the tr trespasser or the transgressor has transgressed against you and don't even know what was going on in that matter of when Paul was writing to that letter to the church of Colossae. The next one that they like to go run to is Mark 11 chapter, the 24th through the 26th verse. This one is really no different from the one that they like to gaslight people with the Lord's Prayer. And so the next one that they like to go run to is Matthew 18, chapter the 21st through the 35th verse. And they love to go run and use this one as their proof text saying that, well, when somebody has trespassed or transgressed against you, you still have to forgive no matter what. And they will sit there and put this down, a person or maybe more throats who does not even forgive. And they'll say, well, you still have to forgive 
even if the even if the transgressor or the trespasser has transgressed against you, no matter how many times it was, you still have to forgive it. Numerous amounts of times, 70 times seven. So they will use this scripture, not even knowing what was going on in the text or what Jesus was saying. The first two verses, which is, Matthew 18 chapter the 21st to the 22nd verse that they like to go gas like people with and then twist, warp, and distort of what Jesus was actually presenting to his disciple Peter. And then the next one that they like to go run to is Luke 11 chapter the, the first through the fourth verse. This one ain't no different from the Lord's prayer neither. And it's just like the next one that they like to go run to, Ephesians 4th chapter, the 31st through the 32nd verse, when Paul was writing it to the church of Ephesus. All of these scriptures that they like to go run to, they love to go gaslight, put fear tactics, and then twist and warp and distort what the Bible is actually saying about all these Men of God or how God orchestrated his law on how forgiveness is. And so I'm just going to tell all of you something that the, the people who do not forgive, the people, they are going to run to these scriptures to try and use fear tactics towards you to say, if you don't do it, you're going to the lake of fire, you're going to a burning hell. And I'm just here to say to all of the Christians and all of the people who follow the doctrine of forgiveness who do this, you know you're not right for doing that. You know you're not right at all. And so you want to get mad at somebody like me that challenges the doctrine of forgiveness or somebody else who is doing the same thing out here on YouTube that you, in your mindset, you have a problem with it. Just as long as the doctrine of forgiveness is ch not challenged, just as long as the doctrine of forgiveness is not questioned, just as long as there is no critical thinking in the doctrine of forgiveness, that when someone knows that it's something wrong with it, there is a major problem with a lot of you people who follow it. But just as long as nobody don't do none of those things to what I just mentioned, it's all all right. It's all all right. But here's another one. Have a lot of you probably have experience or you might be going through it. You might be in a situation to where that you have not forgave a person. You have not forgave or a group of people or some family members of what was done. But however, you keep on rebuking, which is scorning and calling it out. And then keep on bringing it back up. And then when the moment that you constantly bring it back up, these people who follow the doctrine of forgiveness in the religion of Christianity, and just as well as these arrogant people, these narcissist people, and then just as well as these people who love to have their show of, well, let's not bring it up. It's all right to put it down someone's throat that you have to forgive or whatever, but when the time that you bring it up, the transgression up inside of their face or the trespass, then these particular people want to use this gaslighting tactic. Well, you ought to get over it. They will sit there and say this. And you know the reason why that these arrogant people and these narcissist people say this is simply because they do not want to take responsibility for
for their wrongdoing at all. They don't want to take none. So, just as long as it's not brought up, everything is all right. Just as long as we pretend like nothing ain't even happened, it's all right in their book. And it's not all right. Just like all of the arrogant people, just like all of the prideful people want to sit there and act like, well, I ain't did nothing to you, so I don't owe you no apology. I don't need to make things right by you. I don't need to repent. Just like they act like that, you should act, You should have the mindset of, you're not entitled to forgiveness then. But when you start saying that, the Christian world and the people who follow the doctrine of forgiveness going to get real outraged about that. And you know the reason why? It's simply because it all resorts to indoctrination on what has been told. Now, I will tell all of you this. The biblical way is what Jesus said in Luke 17, chapter the third verse. When someone trespasses against you or your brother trespass against you you are required to rebuke but until he repents then you are required to forgive it so but the christian world they are they will deny this scripture all day won't even look at it at all but there are some more, but I ain't got time to give to, to all of you. But that's the correct and the biblical way. No repentance, no making amends, or no making things right. You're not required or entitled to forgiveness. So I'm going to go on ahead and cut this video short. All of you have a great and wonderful day and evening.